So, uh, children and environment. Uh, I have these two starting points to start with. First sentence says that the quality of surrounding environment significantly affects the development of children and young people, which is something which we can all agree upon. And this uh, environment, not only that it affects development and such, but it is also very important as, you know, because it shapes uh, children's uh, relation to the city. It forms their future relation to the city, their, their, their sense of belonging, for example, which is very, very important. And the second sentence uh, is saying that children play everywhere. They interact with all the space surrounding them. And they, they really do. When you watch, uh, for example, a younger children, they're just being children on a sidewalk. They are chasing each other. They are, you know, rotating around the semaphore lights when you wait for the green, etc. And even older children, young adults, they also play, but not in such an obvious way. But you, you still notice some, I don't know, balancing on a curb, uh, on a sidewalk, or, or some teasing between in, uh, each other. There's always some interaction and why I have these two sentences here is because when we think about environment and we think about play spaces it is very important to realize that play doesn't happen only at playgrounds as such it happens everywhere and what we are talking about what Nicola was showing in her slides we are talking about public space here um, well, to start rather pop in a populistic way, um, play spaces. Um, we want them to be uh, challenging for our children and at the same time we want them to be safe for our children to play at. Are these two opposing each other? Are these two aspects in tension? That is something that we will be discussing in our afternoon. But um, when we look at these two pictures, we and we who have children, we clearly know that children enjoy a uh, situation on the left. They enjoy, they have some good play, playing in this playhouse, and, 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 and they will have a good time. And definitely we know that they will enjoy playing in an environment that they set up by themselves. But when we look at play type, at both of these pictures. And when we look at, um, think about benefits that this play is bringing, is, is giving to children, we can clearly recognize that the picture on the right is having much greater impact on the children's experience. The girls over there, uh, they spend some reasonable amount of time with some serious teamwork in order to set up a bunker like this. They probably gained important uh, know-how about some building principles in order to build such a structure. And most importantly, uh, they set up their play environment by themselves, which is giving them incredible experience which will they definitely remember and which definitely they will be proud of, of what they accomplished. Um, similar here, we have this car wreck which was adjusted by children in order to serve their needs in a better way. So what is important is to look at children and what they need and what, what are their needs when we are thinking about the environment. And good thing is that both can be combined, both safe and challenging. They clearly can. There's a lot of examples around the world where some uh, very clever architects, designers, artists, and planners, and as well manufacturers, produced uh, lots of lots of great places for play that offer a challenge and offer safety for our children. Um, Several years ago, I conducted a research with uh, preschool children and younger children of school age. What we did, that we were visiting different types of uh, public space. We were dis visiting uh, formal spaces for play, like playgrounds, and we were visiting informal spaces where play can happen, public space, parks and, and squares and, and such. Um, 
Afterwards, I was trying to map, to, to, to track uh, children's experiences with these spaces. Um, using this combination of cognitive methods, conversation, and um, individual analysis, and also children took photos, uh, I came up with to, uh, this variety of, of conclusions, but just to summarize, children love playgrounds. They, they know that these spaces are their own spaces. They know they, they can play there freely, and they can be children there. And for parents, we know that these places are to be safe to play. And when these playgrounds, we visited different types of playgrounds, of course, from uh, typical, uh, you know, catalog item playgrounds, uh, and, and we visited some more, uh, uh, you know, uh, quality designed spaces. Uh, generally, uh, the conclusion was that the children spend more time playing when playground is offering more opportunities for play, for different types of play, like for some drama play, some imaginable play, like on the picture on, at the left. Children, when they come to a playground, they usually try out all of the play uh, elements they are provided. They try out all of them, but uh, after some time, they get bored with some. And they continue to play usually with some uh, elements that provide for free, pl for, for free, free play with free elements like uh, sand pits, for example. And they also enjoy these really quick and fast elements uh, for physical activity. There is this, um, I don't know how it's called in English, but it is a rope and you sit on a little seat and you really fastly go from one, you know, uh, higher place to another, like rope. Maybe. Cableway, yes, that's one. That's, that's something that's very popular among, among children. Uh, but when we talk about these experiences they, that stay in children's mind after a longer period of time, and I was talking with children immediately that afternoon, uh, uh, that the same day that we visited these places, and also next week, again, after a couple of days, uh, the, the experiences they, they gained when, play, when they were playing in public spaces left a greater impact on, on, their, in, on their memories. For example, here is a picture of this uh, bridge that you have to cross when we were visiting Jeleni Pšikob, which is a, a really nice park just under uh, pr uh, Prague's uh, castle. And when you have to, when you're uh, entering, when you're leaving the park and going back to the city, to the really um, uh, traffic area, you have to cross these kind of uh, metal structures and they are very high. Um, beneath, un under you, there is traffic, trams going, etc., etc. And these younger children were really, really uh, respectful at the beginning to cross. They were really uh, cautious and they did. And that's why I later on I asked them the question, were you afraid when we were crossing these structures? And the answer was, you know, smile from ear to ear. Yes, I was afraid. And that was a great experience. That's what, what they like. And these challenges, these, these frights they have, they, they need to overcome them and they want to do that. That is... Um, what, why it is important to understand children and children needs in the first place before we, we try to design for some environments. When we look at the environments, uh, we have these formal spaces, uh, playgrounds, meaning uh, places with stuffed equipment. Um, in Czech Republic, uh, I think I won't be wrong if I, when I say that great majority of playgrounds is similar uh, to the one on the left. They are just uh, catalog playgrounds, playgrounds that uh, have a catalog uh, certified items which are placed in these uh, soft surfaces, uh, either sand or rubber or some other, and usually fenced. Playgrounds that lack natural elements, um, they, they, they uh, often lack opportunities for different types of play. Uh, but luckily, we, that's not the only thing we have, and during the last couple of years, I think even rapidly, different types of uh, play settlements are appearing and are, are being um, uh, renewed or constructed. And um, 
these types, the, Nicola was talking a lot about this design approach or, 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 or landscape-led approach. That is, of course, um, something that's very important because, for example, this playground on the right, it's settled on Joffin Island. It's next to uh, Manes Building, which is um, a functionalist um, monument of today, and the playground ref ref reflects this. And not only that it brings some other values to children in, in, in terms of play, but it also brings some architectural value to the place itself, which is also very important. We're all talking about the city, and playgrounds are having great impact on, on our cities of today. Um, it is important to say that uh, playgrounds are, are very, very important for children because they are those spaces that are in the closest proximity to, your, to their homes. Not everyone has uh, close access to nature or to, to woods or some great places for play. So play, we must really put great, great attention to, to, to playgrounds. Other form of environment are these informal, informal spaces. And again, you have some, some great uh, public spaces which offer a variety of materials, for example, different structures, offer natural elements as well, different high levels, and which are also incorporated into uh, uh, public spaces such. There are benches around, different generations sitting there, cafes, post office nearby. This place, although it was not uh, designed to be a playground, is constantly occupied by children, even in winter when there is no water here. There are just these stones, but the play continues. Children move stones around, you know, make those hills of stones. They, the play continues, and, and this, this concrete, uh, this specific uh, square in Prague 6 is a great example of uh, play in public space. But then again, you have other spaces, like this park over here, and when you look at them, they don't offer much for children and young. But clearly, you find some evidence of children presence there. And that is important, to know that children are everywhere. But when thinking about these environments, let's look at children and their interactions with space. From the very, very young age, they uh, interact. This is my son, Marco. <laughs> Uh, they interact with the environment. They need to touch, to taste. That's very important. And if you don't have this piece, small piece of safe and clean grass in close proximity to your home, we wouldn't probably have any contact with nature in this young age. Because uh, the quality of space that surrounds it's in, in close proximity to your home, that affects how often you use the space, how, how often uh, you, you go there, you visit it, how you use it, with who, and it also affects the interaction. When we move on and look at preschool children and how they interact with space, we know that they are, again, as well, very sen use their senses, and they, um, they're very sensory to, to, to their environment. When they find some loose elements, like these leaves here, and see a hole somewhere, of course they're gonna try to stick leaves in the hole to see, what, just, just to see what it's gonna do, you know? Maybe it's gonna stuck the canal, but you know, great, I found out that, I need to find out how it works. So they just need to, to, to have the, the, the freedom to play with these loose, these just elements being around. Uh, Nicola, you had the great picture of mud play, but mud, this is just a great resource for play. Jumping around, uh, climbing trees, uh, exploring these boundaries, these, these um, uh, uh, you know, levels of, of, of risk that we can take. And uh, this is my older one when she was five, I think. And from her, experiencing her, I know that no, maybe not all children, but a great majority, they know their boundaries quite well. And they don't go higher. Maya didn't go higher. She stayed here because she knew that if she even manages somehow to climb up here, it would be very difficult for her to get down. They know their boundaries, but they need to try them out. They need to explore, to experience. They rather choose a wall like this to walk by than a sidewalk. And City furniture, very interesting play element for children in public space. 
For us designers, it is very important to understand that children use city furniture in a different way than we so are supposing. And when we design, here is an example of a uh, uh, mistake, deficient uh, groundwork when a puddle stays every time after rain. But it didn't actually matter because children enjoyed it greatly. And when we plan and we design, it is good to know this because then we can play accordingly. And this risks, here is Eva's son over there, this high. They, they just need to find out what are their boundaries, boundaries. And play equipment on playgrounds is sometimes just not enough. It's not enough for them to explore. Here is a good situation where these two kids wanted to pick cherries from a tree in this garden. And they took this ladder. They were said by adults, don't do it. It's not safe. The ladder is not stable at all. Don't do it. So they ran back to the house, to put their bike helmets on, and they continued doing what they planned to do because they just want to do it, having, you know, protecting themselves with the bike helmets. So we can't stop this. We can't stop this process, this natural process of growing up. We need to plan for it. And as children grow up, some risks become even greater. Very popular among some te Czech, Czech teenagers, uh, boys, is uh, parkour. Very popular kind of activity, interaction with urban landscape. And of course, young people, they want to be part of public space. They want to see and they want to be seen. They want to be part of it. So we must keep this in our minds when we design. We must design spaces that, sh that provide them the feeling that they belong there, that they are not, you know, not welcomed. You know, I guess, this internet joke, all of you. It is very, very popular. But it gives us, you know, a no important knowledge that the things we see are seen differently by children. There is this small, small bush just in front of my house. And this small piece of nature is a whole jungle to the kids from neighborhood. They enjoy this small pace, space very greatly. They play there all of the time. For us, it is important to realize that we do not have to over-design spaces, environments for children. There is no need to over-design them. We can leave things simple, common, usual, and it is for children to put the imaginary part. It is up to children to put the, the imaginary play into those spaces. Some issues to address. Uh, public space. They are very important, and uh, looking at different types of public space, there are boundaries that we need to overcome, not only in forms of uh, you know, traffic, some um, danger, social dangers, etc., but even in simpler things like children's scale. And this wall here, this really nice fountain from, you know, Baroque time. But it is just a huge barrier for children. It just represents a wall. They want to see, want to touch, want to know what's happening behind it. But it's a different scale they cannot accomplish. These boundaries, these barriers are also present on, on, on formal places for play. Common thing here in Czech Republic are these playgrounds that are fenced placed in a park which is again fenced. And the, these fences are not the only thing that's uh, uh, presenting barriers for children and young people. But the typical, they are very typical and, and quite obvious. And some examples from Germany, these fences, these boundaries can be solved in different, different ways, more, uh, more acceptable for the surrounding environment. But what I want to stress here is that when you have a fence like this, let's call it a fence, a boundary, it's not that the playground is, is safe or less safe, but what is important is that the outside space becomes more safer with such type of environment, 
it's more safe than this type of environment. When we, when we have a, a playgrounds, formal spaces for play, sometimes it's enough just to, to add some small loose elements for greater and more quality play to happen. In, on Czech, in Czech um, surroundings, we don't have loose elements at playgrounds. But they are very needed. We don't have natural elements and playgrounds. And you have water as something that is essential for you to, to make from sand, for example. First lesson that architectural students go through is that they get water and sand and, you know, create, create something. And that's how you learn to create. Uh, different types of play. It is important to offer a variety. For example, there are many great examples. I'm not putting these slides because I guess a lot of you know them already. But there are adventurous playgrounds, there are natural playgrounds, and there are community playgrounds where you can just be part, part of, of wider range, part of the community, which is very important. Many studies also on benefits of nature to children development. Nature and natural elements must be incorporated into playgrounds, but as well into public space. Because children in today's cities and towns, they don't have easy access to nat nature. But this nature can be brought to them into, through, through different types of design into the city as well. And I'm finishing with this slide, which is actually showing this inclusivity. In, 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 it is important for chil to bring children back to our public spaces, but it is also important to make playgrounds inclusive as well for everybody. I have three children. Today they are eight, five, and eight months. And for me it is very hard to be on a playground which is fenced with just the five-year-old one, when I know that the eight-year-old one just wants to run around and wants to be part of, of public space, wants to climb trees, and, and etc. And the younger one, he just needs a blanket and this piece of grass. So these inclusive spaces without boundaries, without, bar without barriers are very important. Either they are public spaces where there are some challenges for children, but what is important for them is to be part of the environment, part of the community. That is the only way how can they learn about the city. Thank you very much.